Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all, hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Acts. Stall still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me, he asked. Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and, through his eyes were, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he was praying, and he had seen a, in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay, hand, lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he, has, he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, have sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The 
psalm appointed for today is Psalm 30. We will read it responsibly by half verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. And have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you restored me to heaven. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. His, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night. But the joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me a strong Then you hid your face. And I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. And I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my God. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put on my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I do give thanks forever. A reading from Revelation. I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. God shows up. God shows up. God shows up in, in the midst of our lives. Uh, God shows up in the hard places that we face. And that wonderful line in the psalm for today, uh, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. And, and that's, it's not just, I figured it out in the middle of the night, and now I've got the answer. It's, it's, it's God's presence with us, God for us. Uh, as I, I've said, I know many times, I mean, I, I've never seen a descending flames of fire or a burning bush. I, mean, I don't disbelieve those things. I believe in miracles. But, but what I have seen, seen with my own eyes is lives transformed by God's presence in the present, in the world where we live, where we, we find joy and we find sorrow, where we find challenge and we find delight. And yet there God is, God showing up. Uh, I've seen people in the context of faith come in broken and come to be healed. I've seen people come wanting to learn more and wanting to grow in faith and seeing that happen. I've seen people wanting to offer themselves in, in love and in ministry, and I've seen ways that that could occur. And, and that's the miracle, too. That's the miracle. That's God present, working in us. And so that's why the events of our lives matter so much. It's uh, what we call incarnational spirituality, incarnate in the flesh, and it was in Jesus, I mean, the Son of God made man and come into the world, but also God active in our lives, our physical, tangible lives, the challenges we face, the, the opportunities we're given, the, those gracious moments. And so just to say, you don't ever forget that God shows up, or maybe even more properly, I could say, we become aware that God has been present all along and we finally engage in a way where change is possible because we are the limiting factor in the divine human interaction. God's love is abundant. God's love is, is more than we can fathom. But sometimes we open the door a crack and that lets him in. God comes in. God's there. And indeed, God is in us and with us. I mean, the term for that is prevenient grace. But in other words, we don't take God to anybody. By God, God is there. But what we may do, what we may do is help people open their eyes to see, to realize God's presence and how powerful and transformative it can be. I know I give the illustration from my, my hometown and the, the downtown area that looks like any other downtown area on the first floor, but you look up and there's all this history and designs and uniqueness to it that you miss if you just focus on where you're walking. But if you look up, you can see it's there. It's been there all along. And I just use that for an example. If you look up, you realize God's been with us all along. And the uniqueness, the power, the beauty, the love, the forgiveness, it's been there all along but you still got to perceive it. And you will not be made to perceive it. Say, uh, there's a, a wonderful line in one of our hymns, force is not of God. Like we were talking about in the adult class today, God 
is not coercive of us. God doesn't slam us into a corner. God doesn't hold a gun to our heads. It's, it's an invitation. Now, that invitation will be repeated again and again and again, but it's an invitation. And you can say yes or you can say no. I hope to say yes, but just to say God shows up. So in the gospel story we have today, the disciples, you think about it, you know, it's sort of like it's played out for them in a way. In other words, a disciple is a follower. A disciple is one who goes after him. That's what they've done. They've been followers of Jesus. They've been his core followers. I mean, Jesus says, we're going to Jerusalem. They go to Jerusalem. Jesus says, we're going off to a place apart. They go off to a place apart. They follow. I don't, I mean, sometimes they would kind of balk and say, gosh, we were just there. They weren't so happy about it. But, but still, they follow him where he goes. Well, he's not around anymore. This is a post-resurrection appearance that we are dealing with in this gospel story. And so it's like, they don't have Jesus to follow around. So what are they going to do? What are they going to do? You know, they, they've followed this leader for perhaps three years, and now he's gone. So, uh, well, what were they doing before he showed up? They were fishermen. So, not unreasonably, Peter says, well, I'm going fishing. I mean, it's kind of like he's going to go back to the old life. It's the only thing he knows to do, probably. What else is he going to do? I mean, he's not going to start his own, you know, special operation up, perhaps. Or at least he doesn't have the inspiration to do it at that moment. I'm going fishing. He's going back to the life he was living when Jesus came along and said, I will make you fishers of people. And so he spent the last three years following Jesus on the road, doing just that. And the others say, well, I'll go too. And so they go out onto the lake. Now, they're not having such good luck with it. I mean, how's that going for you? Not so well. <laughs> no, it worked all night, no fish to show. And so uh, Jesus appears. Jesus shows up and, and invites him. Well, try the other side. And then they bring in more fish than they can manage almost but miraculously the nets aren't broken but they bring in 153 fish and it's this wonderful image i mean it's sort of like this this like the net the net that goes through and brings in all kinds of fish in a way it's a wonderful image for what the church is called to be this net that goes through and brings in all the fish not just white fish <laughs> not just wealthy fish <laughs> Not, not just heterosexual fish, not just fish from my side of town or that have all the right degrees or wear all the right clothes. And that net just grabs them all and brings them in. And so, and it's, it's, it's filled to bursting, but it doesn't break. And so suddenly they've got their calling back. So it is indeed, as, as Cindy said this morning in the class, like bookends. So their ministry with Jesus began when he came and said to them, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of people. Fishers of men is the way it, it reads in the, some versions. And they do. And so now again, he's appeared to them. He showed up and he's given them, if you will, a renewed calling. And indeed, there's this whole interaction, you know, with Peter, you know, do you love me? You know, Lord, you know I love you. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. You know, and the time will come when you're going to be asked to go someplace you don't want to go. And when you were younger, you got to dress yourself, but somebody's got to put something on you that you don't want. And that's the death that he is going to have to glorify God. But that God shows up, and God invites, and God sends. And so in the midst of their confusion, I mean, they've lost their leader. They've, they've lost the one they followed as disciples for the last three years. But another term that comes to be applied to them instead of disciple, which means follower, is apostle. And an apostle is sent out into the world. And in a sense, we, all of us, by our ministries, share derivatively in that 
apostolic calling. I mean, ultimately, in our church, of course, we have the apostles and the successors to them who are our bishops, but in a fuller sense, we are all of us sent out in our own ways with ministry, sent out to glorify God, sent out to help others to perceive that God does indeed show up and that God's activity can indeed be found in their lives, in their ordinary lives, extraordinary in the ordinary. And it's, it's almost like sometimes if you're not looking for it, you don't see it. And that's the, 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 the terrible thing about it. It's like as if Jesus is showing up or all these gracious things are happening and you're too busy to look. You've got your eyes closed. Or you, you're, 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 check, you're looking for text on your phone. And he's saying, hey, yeah, I'm right here. Here I am. Life is good. I love you. And I said, yeah, but I've got this thing I've got to find. You know, I remember I was doing classroom teaching. I'd say I could see. I used to call it text face. If, a, if somebody is just, it's like the, it's almost like the color falls out of the face. And they're, they're just looking at this thing, just looking at the screen. But it's like Jesus says, well, quit looking at the screen and look at me. I'm right here in front of your eyes. And he sends the disciples out with the calling of apostles and sends them out into the world, out where they'll be needed, out where they're also going to be very much at risk. And many of them, you'll notice their saints days in the calendar are little red squares, which means they gave their lives and martyrdom for the faith. But whether you know, a mortal sacrifice is required or just the little sacrifices of day-to-day -day generosity, forgiveness, attentiveness, service, realize that God shows up, God's active in our lives, and God invites us to find those moments in the ministry that he offers so generously to each of us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten by faith, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was laid in heaven. For our sake, he was crucified and punished by silent. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers for People are 43, found in your bulletin and on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that, you all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by our own people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed.
part of eternal rest. Let that perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers of well-being and comfort for Matt Wilson, Sophia Wilson, Dan, Marge, Jim, Mabel, Betty, Walker, Beverly, Norm, Barbara, Laura, Bill, as well as all those who suffer. We offer prayers of healing for Bev, Susanna, Janet, and Cindy. We also remember those in the armed services, both home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, St. Albans Church, Moorhead. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Episcopal Church of, in the Philippines. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the anniversary of Father Rob Slocum's ordination. I invite your own prayers and thanksgiving silently or aloud. Pray for the people of Ukraine and all the suffering in that situation. Let's fight fires and war. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice and the hope of eternal glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please stand and share. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works revealed your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Peter, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.